What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to share with you guys 10 workflow tips that are used every time I'm basically in After Effects. And so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Asus for this dope laptop. If you click on the link that's up above where I did an actual overview of Show Me using this, and I actually used it for a couple of projects on this YouTube channel. But again, big shout out to Asus. So I'm getting started off in After Effects. I'm using version 2020. And if you look right here on my comp, I'm gonna start off in this project window. So for the first tip, I'm actually gonna show you guys two ways that you can easily and quickly import your objects. So the first way is if I double click right here inside of my project section, you can see it automatically brings up the import window. And so I have some Illustrator files. I can click on it, click import, and there you go. It's asking me, you know, if I wanna import it as footage, I'm just click okay. And boom, we have our Illustrator file inside of After Effects. Now, another quick way of doing this is actually using a shortcut key with Control I. So if I go on my keyboard, hit Control I, same thing, the import window pops up. I'm gonna import this other Illustrator file, click import right there, boom, there we go. Now I have my other Illustrator file inside of my project window. So this is something that I'm often using when I'm working just to save, you know, like a second or two whenever I'm importing my files. So for this next tip, I'm actually gonna make a composition because we're gonna be working in a composition window for this. So my duration, I'll make it something small, maybe like five seconds here, like so. So now I have up a composition here and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab one of these Illustrator files, bring it into my composition and then from here, what I'm gonna do is actually show you guys how we could quickly duplicate it once we have it in our timeline here. So the shortcut for this is actually hit Control D on your keyboard. So if I have it selected here in my timeline, I just hit Control D and boom, there we go. We got it duplicated in there. It's a lot faster than hitting Control C, Control V to copy and paste. Control D just duplicates it right inside your timeline. So for this next tip, I'm gonna start off with a blank composition again. I'm actually just gonna bring in a solid. So I'm gonna right click come into solid and let's not make it the same width, let's make it maybe half. So I'm just gonna do divided by two for the width, divided by two for the height, and let's make this something really bright like red. And so for this next tip, I actually wanna show you guys how we could take this and actually make it fill the entire composition. So if I hit Control Alt F, I'm gonna hold all this down at the same time. So I'm gonna hit Control Alt F on the keyboard and that automatically fills up the composition there. So if I come down here and I come down and look for my scale under the transform, you can see it proportionally built it out, but let's say that we have an item that's not proportional to it. So I can actually delete this out. Let me bring in my flying pug here. And if I hold down Control Alt F, and then let's look down at the scale here. I'm gonna go down to my transform and you can see that it made it like 83% by 63%. So what this is gonna do is actually gonna take whatever item you have in your timeline and actually stretch it to fill the proportion of your composition. But a lot of times I like using this if I know I have something that's 16 by nine, I can easily hit, you know, Control Alt F and it's gonna fill it in. For this next tip, I wanna show you guys how we could take a composition and say like you're working in like a promo graphic or a trailer graphic, you built everything out nice and neat in HD, but the client needs the project in SD for whatever reason, there is a way that we could take those HD files into an SD composition and not have it stretch out. And so let me show you exactly how I go about doing that. So I have this HD project right here. I actually have my Puggle in here, the graphic, just so we have a reference so we can see that it's not gonna stretch out. And I'm gonna come down and actually make a new composition. I'm just gonna name this one SD. And then the preset, we're just gonna use the top one here. So the project for the SD file is gonna be 720 by 480. And then we're gonna click OK here. So now we have our new SD project in here. And what we normally do is come up to HD, just click and drag it in here. And if I hit S on my keyboard, which I'll go over this shortcut later, but for now, just hit S on your keyboard for scale. And if I start scaling this down, it's like sometimes you can eyeball it, but sometimes you want it to be exact too. So say we're having a hard time making it fill the gaps in the top and the bottom. We don't wanna use the Control Alt F on this one because it's actually gonna squeeze it in. Let me show you an example. So if I'd use the same shortcut as last time, you can see now it just squeezed my puggle in and that's not what we want. If I look down here at scale, it made it 34% by 44%. So I'm gonna hit Control Z bring that back to where it's gonna be in right proportions. So the cool thing about this is we can fill the gap so it's nice and even and not have it stretch out. So if I come down here to scale and I right click and I come up to edit value, you have this window open up here for the scale. 
And what I want to do is come down to here where it says units, and I want to click on this, and I want to do percentage of composition, as you can see right here. So I'm going to click on this, and then right here where it says height, I actually want to make this 100%. And you can see that the width is actually going to be 118, but that's fine because we just want to make sure that we're filling in the top and the bottom. And I have the preview one, so we automatically saw it do it in real time. So if I click OK, now if you look at my scale, it has it at 44.4%. It has it down to the 10th percent there. And if you look at my SD file, we have an HD graphic right into our SD composition and nothing is stretched out. So for this next tip, I want to show you guys the shortcut keys, how we could get the transformation properties up quick and easy so we could work on our timeline really fast. So if I click on my layer here and click the S key, that's actually going to bring up our scale property. And if I click on the A key, that's going to bring up the anchor point. And if I click on the T key, that's going to bring up our opacity. And if I click on the P, that's going to bring up our position. And then for the last one, if I click on R, that's going to bring up our rotation. So now that we know what keys will equivalent to what on our layer, say we want to have a couple of these open. It's quick and easy if we hold down the shift key. So right now I have rotate selected. If I hold down the shift key and hit S, now it's going to add the scale to that. If I hold down the shift key, hit T, it's going to bring up the opacity. So that's a way that we can actually bring those in there and say that we have like something on here like curves, we can actually bring up the shortcut for that as well. So let me come over to effects and presets and let me add like a levels or a curves or something to it. So I'm just going to type in curves here and I'm going to add a curve to my layer. So now inside of my effects panel, we have curves. And if I click on this, I'm just going to scroll this up. If I click on E, that's going to bring up anything that's in the effects panel. So I clicked on E and now our curves came up. And then if I hold down shift, I could bring up the scale, et cetera, et cetera. So those are actually some of my favorite tools that I use constantly every time I'm in After Effects. So let's say we're in After Effects and we need to have this layer, you know, cut off at maybe like 10 frames at the top. An easy way to do it is you can click and drag it over like so inside of your timeline. Or if you want to get fast with it, you just go to maybe like 10 frames here, hold down the Alt key, hit the left bracket button, and boom, there you go, that automatically cut it right there. And if you wanted to cut it on the right side, so let's say we go up to like a second and 10 frames, you hold down the Alt key and hit the right bracket there, and there you go. Now it brought it in and it cut our layer accordingly. So say that we want to bring it up to maybe like the two second mark, we want to take exactly what we cut there over to that two second mark. So all you have to do from here is actually hit the left bracket key and that's going to make it jump over. And if you want to make it jump over to the end, of course, you just hit the right bracket key on your keyboard. Boom, there you go. So now we have the end point coming to the two second mark inside of our timeline. And so those bracket keys are essential for working fast inside of your timeline and after effects. And so since we're inside the timeline, if you wanted to move up maybe by like a frame, so let's say we're inside of our timeline and we're scrolling with our mouse and everything, and we want to get to like the one second and 21 frame for whatever reason, if your timeline is really, really large, sometimes that's hard to do by the mouse. But if you click just like the page up key and the page down key, that's how you go up and down in your timeline by frame. So right now I'm hitting the page up key and it's actually moving to the left in our timeline. And if I'm hitting the page down key on my keyboard, that's actually moving to the right in my timeline and it's going up frame by frame. So say like you have a really large timeline, it's gonna be hard to get it to the exact point with your mouse. And so this is a quick tip how you can get to the exact frame that you want to when you're working in a really large timeline. So for this next tip, I wanna show you guys how you can quickly and easily replace a file that's inside of your timeline in After Effects here. So let me go to my HD file where I have my flying puggle and say I wanna replace them with with my other puggle. So I just have to select this layer. And then if I come up into my project palette here and I have my other puggle selected. So if I just hold down the Alt key, the left Alt key on my keyboard, left click on my mouse and drag it down. Make sure the layer that you want to replace is selected. I'm just going to click and let go. There we go. So now I automatically replace that inside of my timeline. Again, say like, okay, I didn't want to do that. I want to replace it with something else. I just come up here, project panel, come back down to flying. Hold the left Alt key on my keyboard, left click and drag it all the way down. And then there you go, it's gonna replace it in there. So let's say that I'm working on a small monitor. You need all the real estate that you can get in here and you wanna go through your animation. So actually let me come through, hit P on my keyboard for position and I'm just gonna slide it all the way over and then I'm just gonna move my puggle over here like so. So I just have them flying across the screen. And if I hit zero on my keyboard, 
it's going to be flying through the scene here. But let's say I want to see it in full screen. I want to see it like in all its glory here. So all I have to do is hit the tilde key. Like I select the window that I want to make full screen. So let me stop that here. So say that I want to make this composition window full screen so that I can see it in all its glory. It's as easy as hitting the tilde key. And then I could just scroll in here or with my mouse like so, and then hit zero on my keyboard. And now I have my composition screen at full screen and it's going to fill up the whole entire real estate so I can see it nice and clear. And whenever I'm done, all I have to do is hit the tilde key again. And there we go. Now everything is back to normal. So say for some reason we want our project panel to be full screen so we can see some of the files in here. All you have to do is click on a project panel, hit the tilde key, and there you go. Now that fills up the entire screen hit the tilde key again, and then it's gonna be back to normal. So most of the time, I just do it for the composition window for whatever reason. If I wanna really see it in full screen at 100%, I bring it over to the composition window, hit the tilde key, and it makes it full screen for me. In which this is actually gonna bring me to my last tip here. And so if I come down here in my composition window, you see where it says 50%. If I click on this and I hit fit to 100%, it's actually going to fill up the entire real estate of that composition window. I'm on my laptop right now, so I would have to like stretch this out a little bit, stretch it down. And you see it's actually, you know, moving with the way that I'm, you know, I'm stretching this stuff out. But if I hit the tilde key on here, full screen, and now it's going to bring it up to at least, what does it say, 96%. You can actually select the different sizes that you want there, but if you want it at 100, hit fit to 100%, and there you go. So now it's filling up the entire real estate as much as it can, depending on the resolution of your desktop as well. So hopefully these tips helped you guys out. I know these are only 10, but these are the 10 most common used tips that I use every time I'm in After Effects. If you have your own tips, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And before I go, I want to give a big shout out to Comica. They sent me these live mics. These are actually wireless. So this is my first time using them. Let me know if they're sounding good or what you guys think of them. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to it. I appreciate it if you give it a big like. And until next time, stay fresh. Keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you guys again. I'll see you soon. Take care.